Section two of The Empire of Business by Andrew Carnegie. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in August 2020. The Empire of Business, Section 2 the common interest of labor and capital address to working men a great philosopher has pointed out to us that in this life the chief the highest reward that we can obtain is the purchase of satisfactions i have purchased a great satisfaction one of the greatest i have ever acquired i have been privileged to help some of my fellow workmen help themselves this library braddock pennsylvania will give them an opportunity to make themselves more valuable to their employers and so lay up intellectual capital that cannot be impaired or depreciated it is very unfortunate that the irresistible tendency of our age which draws manufacturing into immense establishments requiring the work of thousands of men renders it impossible for employers who reside near to obtain that intimate acquaintance with employees which under the old system of manufacturing and very small establishments made the relation of master and man more pleasing to both when articles were manufactured in small shops by employers who required only the assistance of a few men and apprentices the employer had opportunities to know every one to become well acquainted with each and to know his merits both as a man and as a workman and on the other hand the workman being brought into closer contact with his employer inevitably knew more of his business of his cares and troubles of his efforts to succeed and more important than all they came to know something of the characteristics of the man himself all this is changed thus the employees become more like human machines as it were to the employer and the employer becomes almost a myth to his men from every point of view this is a most regrettable result yet it is one for which i see no remedy the free play of economic laws is forcing the manufacture of all articles of general consumption more and more into the hands of a few enormous concerns that their cost to the consumer may be less there is no longer any room for conducting the manufacture of such articles upon a small scale expensive works and machinery costing millions are required as the amount per ton or per yard of what we call fixed charges is so great a factor in the total cost that whether a concern can run successfully or not in many cases depends on whether it divides these fixed charges which may be said to be practically the same in a large establishment as in a smaller by a thousand tons per day or by five hundred tons per day of product hence the reason for the continual increase year by year in the product of your mills not that the manufacturer wishes primarily to increase his product but that the strain of competition forces him into extensions that he may thereby reduce more and more per ton or per yard these fixed charges upon which the safety of his capital depends it being therefore impossible for the employers of thousands to become acquainted with their men if we are not to lose all feeling of mutuality between us the employer must seek their acquaintance through other forms to express his care for the well-being of those upon whose labor he depends for success by devoting part of his earnings for institutions like this library and for the accommodation of organizations such as the cooperative stores which occupy the lower floor of this building and i hope in return that the employees are to show by the use which they make of such benefactions that they in turn respond to this sentiment upon the part of employers wherever it may be found by such means as these we may hope to maintain to some extent the old feeling of kindliness mutual confidence respect and esteem which formerly distinguished the relations between the employer and his men we are younger than europe and have still something to see from the older land in this respect 
but i rejoice to see that many manufacturers in this country are awaking to the sense of duty to their employees and what is even still more important are the evidences which we find among our workmen of a desire to establish societies which cannot but be beneficial to themselves it is all well enough for people to help others but the grandest result is achieved when people prove able to help themselves another important feature which may be referred to is that in pittsburgh labor generally is paid so well that the workman can save something every month if only he will make the effort nothing can exceed the importance of saving part of his earnings the workman who owns his own home has already a sure foundation upon which to build the competence which is to give him comfort and independence in old age i have said how desirable it was that we should endeavor by every means in our power to bring about a feeling of mutuality and partnership between the employer and the employed believe me the interests of capital and labor are one he is an enemy of labor who seeks to array labor against capital he is the enemy of capital who seeks to array capital against labor i have given the subject of labor and capital careful study for years and i wish to quote a few paragraphs from an article i published years ago quote, the greatest cause of the friction which prevails between capital and labor the real essence of the trouble and the remedy i have to propose for this unfortunate friction the trouble is that men are not paid at any time the compensation proper to that time all large concerns necessarily keep filled with orders say for six months in advance and these orders are taken of course at prices prevailing when they are booked this year's operations furnish perhaps the best illustration of the difficulty steel rails at the end of last year for delivery this year were twenty nine dollars per ton at the works of course the mills entered orders freely at this price and kept on entering them until the demand growing unexpectedly great carried prices up to thirty five dollars per ton now the various mills in america are compelled for the next six months or more to run upon orders which do not average thirty one dollars per ton at the seaboard and pittsburgh and say thirty four dollars at chicago transportation ironstone and prices of all kinds have advanced upon them in the meantime and they must therefore run for the bulk of the year upon very small margins of profit but the men noticing in the papers the great boom in steel rails very naturally demand their share of the advance and under our existing faulty arrangements between capital and labor they have secured it the employers therefore have grudgingly given what they know under proper arrangements they should not have been required to give and there has been friction and still is dissatisfaction upon the part of the employers reverse this picture the steel rail market falls again the mills have still six months work at prices above the prevailing market and can afford to pay men higher wages than the then existing state of the market would apparently justify but having just been immersed in extra payments for labor which they should not have paid they naturally attempt to reduce wages as the market price of the rails goes down and there arises discontent among the men and we have a repetition of the negotiations and strikes which have characterized the beginning of this year in other words when the employer is going down the employee insists on going up and vice versa what we must seek is a plan by which men will receive high wages when their employers are receiving high prices for the product and hence are making large profits and per contra when the employers are receiving low prices for product and therefore small if any profits the men will receive low wages if this plan can be found employers and employed will be in the same boat rejoicing together in their prosperity and calling into play their fortitude together in adversity there will be no room for quarrels and instead of a feeling of antagonism there will be a feeling of partnership between employers and employed there is a simple means of producing this result and to its general introduction both employers and employed should steadily bend their energies 
wages should be based upon a sliding scale in proportion to the net prices received for product month by month it is impossible for capital to defraud labor under a sliding scale End quote. one advantage of this library carnegie library at braddock pennsylvania will be that it will bring before you every local newspaper and every trade journal and i beg you all to read these carefully you will find many misstatements many blunders these are inseparable from the newspaper press which must work hastily and report even rumors but by studying the principal journals the tendency of affairs can be correctly seen newspapers will not give you a correct statement of the prices of material manufacturers are disposed to give the brightest coloring to the situation to report the highest sales made with a view to maintain prices and induce customers to purchase they will probably not report how low they have been compelled to sell in order to meet competition and keep works running nevertheless a careful perusal of the newspapers and trade journals as i have said will enable you to form a general opinion of the trend of events in the commercial world if you read the papers to-day you will know that out of thirteen mills engaged in the manufacture of steel rails in this country not more than three are running to their capacity only one mill in all the west is making rails north chicago and i am sorry to say that it seems probable that even that one will not be able to run continuously the most melancholy feature in all the disputes between labor and capital is that it is scarcely ever capital that succeeds in breaking down the price of labor but alas it is labor which stabs labor look around you and see labor working for ten twenty and even thirty per cent less in some mills and at johnstown and harrisburg for less than one half what we pay for skilled labor in this district and then in your hearts blame not capital but consider employers who regret their reductions in wages who stand out against them and run for years at higher prices as the best friends of labor even although at last they must frankly confess that if they are to give their men steady employment and save their capital and works they are forced to ask them to work at the rates obtained by their competitors the first employer who reduces labor is labor's enemy but the last employer to reduce labor may be labor's staunchest friend the fatal enemy of labor is labor not capital the greatest character in the public life of britain and the staunchest friend of the republic in its hour of need the radical john bright being once asked what was his most valuable acquisition replied a taste for reading i can truthfully say from my own experience that i agree with that great man most anxious to give you the best advice in my power i advise you to cultivate the taste for reading when i was a boy in my teens in allegheny city colonel anderson whose memory i must ever revere who had a few hundred books gave notice that he would lend these books every saturday afternoon to boys and young men you cannot imagine with what anxiety some of us who embraced this opportunity to obtain knowledge looked forward to every saturday afternoon when we could get one book exchanged for another the principal partner with me in all our business mr phipps equally with myself had obtained access to the stores of knowledge by means of this benefactor it is from personal experience that i feel that there is no human arrangement so powerful for good there is no benefit that can be bestowed upon a community so great as that which places within the reach of all the treasures of the world which are stored up in books we occasionally find traces even at this day of the old prejudice which existed against educating the masses of the people i do not wonder that this should exist when i reflect upon what has hitherto passed for education men have wasted their precious years trying to extract education from an ignorant past whose chief province is to teach us not what to adopt but what to avoid men have sent their sons to college to waste their energies upon obtaining a knowledge of such languages as greek and latin which are of no more practical use to them than choctaw 
i have known few college graduates that knew shakespeare or milton they might be able to tell you all about ulysses or agamemnon or hector but what are these compared to the characters that we find in our own classics one service russell lowell has done for which he should be thanked he has boldly said that in shakespeare alone we have a greater treasure than in all the classics of ancient time they have been crammed with the details of petty and insignificant skirmishes between savages and taught to exalt a band of ruffians into heroes and we have called them educated they have been educated as if they were destined for life upon some other planet than this they have in no sense received instruction on the contrary what they have obtained has served to imbue them with false ideas and to give them a distaste for practical life i do not wonder that a prejudice has arisen and still exists against such education in my own experience i can say that i have known few young men intended for business who were not injured by a collegiate education had they gone into active work during the years spent at college they would have been better educated men in every true sense of that term the fire and energy have been stamped out of them and how to so manage as to live a life of idleness and not a life of usefulness has become the chief question with them but a new idea of education is now upon us we have begun to realize that a knowledge of chemistry for instance is worth more than a knowledge of all the dead languages that ever were spoken a knowledge of mechanics more useful than all the classical learning that can be crammed into young men at college what is the young man to do who knows greek with a young man who knows stenography or telegraphy for instance or bookkeeping or chemistry or the laws of mechanics in these days not that any kind of knowledge is to be underrated all knowledge is in a sense useful the point i wish to make is this that except for the few who have the taste for the antiquarian and who find that their work in life is to delve among the dusty records of the past and for the few that lead professional lives the education given to-day in our colleges is a positive disadvantage the lack of education in its true sense has done more than all the other causes combined to prevent the universal recognition of labor i remember that the great president the greatest of all railway managers edgar thompson after whom the works here are called once asked me to remove from pittsburgh to be master of machinery of the pennsylvania railroad well you may smile and i said to mr thompson why mr thompson you amaze me i know nothing whatever about machinery that is the reason i want you to take charge of it he replied i have never known a mechanic with judgment and good sense except one this was before the time of captain jones so he could not have referred to the captain this lack of judgment in mechanics was because at that day in this country they had failed to receive an all-round education i mean the true education and knowledge of matters and things in general by which we are surrounded and with which we have to deal the unprecedented success which has attended the development of the bessemer works in this country has arisen from this cause above all others that unlike the manufacture of iron it has fallen into the hands of men of great scientific knowledge the services of these men are recognized throughout the world and receive compensation which a few years ago would have been considered enormous and in consequence they have lifted mechanical labor with them and served to dignify it in the eyes of the world the mechanic the mechanical engineer the manager of steel mills are now titles of honor if you want to make labor what it should be educate yourself in useful knowledge that is the moral i would emphasize get knowledge cultivate a taste for reading that you may know what the world has done and is doing and the drift of affairs the value of the education which young men can now receive cannot be overestimated and it is to this education as given in technical schools to which i wish to call your attention time was when men had so little knowledge that it was easy for one man to embrace it all and the courses in colleges bear painful evidence of this fact to-day 
knowledge is now so various so extensive so minute that it is impossible for any man to know thoroughly more than one small branch this is the age of the specialist therefore you who have to make your living in this world should resolve to know the art which gives you support to know that thoroughly and well to be an expert in your specialty if you are a mechanic then from this library study every work bearing upon the subject of mechanics if you are a chemist then every work bearing upon chemistry if you are at the blast furnaces then every work upon the blast furnace if in the mines then every work upon mining let no man know more of your specialty than you do yourself that should be your ideal then far less important but still important to bring sweetness and light into your life be sure to read promiscuously and know a little about as many things as you have time to read about just as on his farm the farmer must first attend well to his potatoes and his corn and his wheat from which he derives his revenue so he may spend his spare hours as a labor of love in cultivating the flowers that surround his home one domain your work the other your recreation in these days of transition and of struggles between labor and capital to no better purpose can you devote a few of your spare hours than to a study of economic questions there are certain great laws which will be obeyed the law of supply and demand the law of competition the law of wages and profits all these you will find laid down in the textbooks and remember that there is no more possibility of defeating the operation of these laws than there is of thwarting the laws of nature which determine the humidity of the atmosphere or the revolution of the earth upon its axis a severe study of scientific books must not be permitted to exclude the equally important duty of reading the masters of literature and by all means of fiction the feeling which prevails in some quarters against fiction is in my opinion only a prejudice i know that some indeed most of the eminent men find in a good work of fiction one of the best means of enjoyment and of rest when exhausted in mind and body and especially in mind nothing is so beneficial to them as to read a good novel the fact that they know more about a problem than their fellows and are able to suggest the remedy or improvement is what is of value to them and their employer there is no means so sure for enabling the workman to rise to the foremanship managership and finally partnership as knowledge of all that has been done and is being done in the world to-day in the special department in which he labors from the highest down to the lowest a better grade of service is rendered by the intelligent man than it is possible for the ignorant man to render his knowledge always comes in and whether you have knowledge on the part of the manager who directs or of the man who only handles a shovel you have in him a valuable employee in proportion to his knowledge other things being equal in the course of my experience as a manufacturer i know our firm has made many mistakes by neglecting one simple rule never to undertake anything new until your managers have had an opportunity to examine everything that has been done throughout this world in that department neglect of this has cost us many hundreds of thousands of dollars and we have become wise now i say here to the man who is ambitious to learn who perhaps thinks that he has some improvement in his mind here in the rooms of this library there is or i hope soon will be the whole world's experience upon that subject brought right before you down to a recent date in any question of mechanics or any question of chemistry any question of furnace practice you will find the records of the world at your disposal here if you are on the wrong track these books will tell you if you are on the right track they will tell you if you are on the right track they will afford you encouragement you can go through hall after hall in the patent office in washington and see thousands of models of inventions bearing upon all branches of human industry and ninety-nine out of every hundred would never have been placed there had the ignorant inventor had at command such facilities as will be yours in this library 
i have heard employers say that there was great danger that the masses of the people might become too well educated to be content in their useful and necessary occupations it has required an effort upon my part to listen to this doctrine with patience it is all wrong i give it an unqualified contradiction the trouble between capital and labor is just in proportion to the ignorance of the employer and the ignorance of the employed the more intelligent the employer the better and the more intelligent the employed the better it is never education it is never knowledge that produces collision it is always ignorance on the part of one or the other of the two forces speaking from an experience not inconsiderable i make this statement capital is ignorant of the necessities and the just dues of labor and labor is ignorant of the necessities and dangers of capital that is the true origin of friction between them more knowledge on the part of capital of the good qualities of those that serve it and some knowledge on the part of the men of the economic laws which hold the capitalists in their relentless grasp would obviate most of the difficulties which arise between these two forces which are indispensably necessary to each other i hope that those of our men who possess that inestimable prize the taste for reading will make it a point to study carefully a few of the fundamental laws from which there is no escape either on the part of labor or capital if this library be instrumental in the slightest degree in spreading knowledge in this department it will have justified its existence i trust that you will not forget the importance of amusements life must not be taken too seriously it is a great mistake to think that the man who works all the time wins the race have your amusements learn to play a good game of whist or a good game of draughts or a good game of billiards become interested in baseball or cricket or horses anything that will give you innocent enjoyment and relieve you from the usual strain there is not anything better than a good laugh i attribute most of my success in life to the fact that as my partners often say trouble runs off my back like water from a duck there is a poetical quotation from shakespeare that is applicable it is to wear your troubles as your outsides like your garments carelessly many men are to be met with in this life who would have been great and successful had the world rated them at the value which they placed upon themselves this class are the victims of an hallucination nobody in the world desires to keep down ability everybody in the world has an outstretched hand for it every employer of labor is studying the young men around him most anxious to find one of exceptional ability nothing in the world so desirable for him and so profitable for him as such a man every manager in the works stands ready to grasp to utilize the man that can do something that is valuable every foreman wants to have under him in his department able men upon whom he can rely and whose merits he obtains credit for because the greatest test of ability in a manager is not the man himself but the men with whom he is able to surround himself these books on the shelves will tell you the story of the rise of many men from our own ranks it is not the educated or so-called classically educated man it is not the aristocracy it is not the monarchs that have ruled the destinies of the world either in camp council laboratory or workshop the great inventions the improvements the discoveries in science the great works in literature have sprung from the ranks of the poor you can scarcely name a great invention or a great discovery you can scarcely name a great picture or a great statue a great song or a great story nor anything great that has not been the product of men who started like yourselves to earn an honest living by honest work and believe me the man whom the foreman does not appreciate and the foreman whom the manager does not appreciate and the manager whom the firm does not appreciate has to find the fault not in the firm nor the manager nor the foreman but in himself he cannot give the service that which is so invaluable and so anxiously looked for 
there is no man who may not rise to the highest position nor is there any man who from lack of the right qualities or failure to exercise them may not sink to the lowest employees have chances to rise to higher work to rise to be foremen to be superintendents and even to rise to be partners and even to be chairmen in our service if they prove themselves possessed of the qualities required they need never fear being dispensed with it is we who fear that the abilities of such men may be lost to us it is highly gratifying to know that the hours of labor are being gradually reduced throughout the country eight hours to work eight hours to play eight hours to sleep seems the ideal division if we could only establish by law that all manufacturing concerns which run day and night should use three turns it would be most desirable you know we tried to do so for several years at a cost of some hundreds of thousands of dollars but were finally compelled by our competitors to give up the struggle the best plan perhaps is to reach it by slow degrees through state laws no one firm can do much all its competitors in the various states must be compelled to do likewise for in our days profits are upon so narrow a margin that no firm can run its works except under similar conditions with its competitors it is necessary therefore that laws should be secured binding upon all we should be glad to support such a law but even as at present if workmen use well the time they have at their disposal they will soon rise to higher positions you need not work twelve hours very long most of us have worked more hours than twelve in our youth the workman has many advantages to-day over his predecessors a sliding scale for his labor ranks him higher than before as a man and a citizen the proportion of the joint earnings of capital and labor given to labor never was so great and is constantly rising the earnings of capital never were so low i hope the future is to add many more advantages and that the toilsome march which labor has had to make on its way from serfdom when our forefathers were bought and sold with the mines and factories they worked up to its present condition is not yet ended but that it is destined to continue and lead to other important results for the benefit and dignity of labor end of section two the common interest of labor and capital